Hello, Marcel here, and today I will show you the new Preserve Initial State feature of Lucid plugin for 3ds Max, as well as share some tips about setting up rigid body objects. So let me just get started here by opening a scene I have created earlier, and it is a very basic setup which has a collision object and two fluid spheres inside of it. So if I just press simulate and simulate my scene, the fluid simulation will commence and we will get the fluid to settle down after a little while and end up in a state like this. So one of the features we had requested from our users is the ability to kind of start out already in this state as opposed to always having to start simulation with objects in their voxelized form like this. So for example, if you have a pool full of water and you want the pool to be already full of water during the start of the simulation, you don't have to go through the whole simulation beforehand to, to get the water into this position. So I'm just going to stop play here and show you how this is now possible using our new preserve initial state feature. So if I go back to my lucid modifier of one of the spheres, we can see that there is now a set initial state button and if I click it, it will set the initial state for this particular object. I can now clear the initial state but we'll leave it for now. So at this point if I exit the simulation and if I restart it, the sphere for which we did not press the button of setting initial state continues to be initialized as it was before. But the other sphere for which we did set the initial state now has this shape which it has acquired after settling down during our simulation. So if I press play right now, we get the spheres interacting with each other. So this just shows that the particles that were set as initial state actually did settle down and the other sphere is able to interact with them. So let me just settle down the simulation a little bit more and I'm going to go and also select other sphere and I'm also going to set the initial state for it. For my first sphere, I'm also going to go back and first I will clear the previous initial state and you can clear the state even if you go out of the simulation, but you can only set the state while you are inside the simulation and this can be any kind of simulation locked live or as we have here incremental so I'm just going to set again the initial state and if I exit the simulation and restart it we can see that the spheres are back into this state where they're already settled down and we don't really need to do this scrubbing again to get them to settle so now I can go and maybe add some other object into my scene maybe a teapot which will have rigid body material for example using the wood material and I'm just going to increase Increase the density a little bit to make it slightly heavier. So if we press simulate right now, we get our spheres already settled down and the teapot will just fall into our little pool of water here. So this is a great little feature and it will work even if you save and reload the scenes, all the states will stay intact. And like I said before, you can always exit the simulation and at any point you can go and clear this initial state. One important thing to keep in mind is that if you do set the initial state for objects and then go and change things like global parameters with number of subsets or maybe iterations, this can have the effect on the state of the particles and you might have to reset the initial state at this point. However, as long as you don't touch the settings for the particular object like the particle sizes or the simulation granularity like the substeps, it should remain valid throughout the whole time while you are working with your scene. We will make this scene available on our website so you can download it and play around with it yourself. The initial state doesn't only apply to fluid objects, it really applies to any type of objects that simulated inside Lucid, except maybe for the collision objects. So in this scene I have a cloth object that is pretty high detailed, I have 40 by 40 segments, and the rest are the collision objects. So if I just press simulate and I scroll and let my cloth settle a little bit, I can also go into the Lucid modifier for it and use the set initial button to set the state of the cloth to be this particular shape. If I exit the simulation and if I restart it, it starts already being in this shape and the rest of the simulation will just continue modifying it. So this is useful for setting up your scenes with tablecloth or character cloth that are already starting out in a specific shape before your character starts being animated. So the second and the last thing I wanted to show are some tips about using the soft body objects inside Lucid and we had some questions about this that I want to clear up and show you how to use our soft object material. So I have loaded the scene and this basically just has a default box which I will set the segments to a higher value so we can have it bend a little bit and to this box I, I assigned a Lucid modifier that has a soft body parameter and all the settings here are mostly default. 
and the plane here is just our collision object. So if I press simulate right now, we will see that our box falls down, but it really behaves very rigid and not really soft like we wanted to. And there are a few things that are responsible for this. One common thing is the lack of clusters that get generated for soft body objects. And to help you to debug this problem, we have added a cluster count display in soft body settings rollout. And you can see that in this case, we actually do have enough clusters. We have 28 of them. So this is not a problem, but if it was a problem, you can adjust this by changing the cluster spacing property. What we do need to change are the following properties. Depending on the shape of your mesh, you may need to change the cluster stiffness parameter. And this parameter is responsible for how stiff or or how soft the object is. So I will change it by a hundred in our case to make it 0 0.005. We can change the volume sampling to one and the surface sampling to zero because we don't really need to sample our particles along the surface of the mesh, but we do need to sample them inside the volume of the mesh. And the last thing that we do need to change is the number of sub steps and iterations in our simulation. So just by adding the global simulation helper, I have set the sub steps to 20 and iterations to three. If I simulate my object now, after making these changes, we can see that all of a sudden it became a lot softer than it was before. And this is further more evident if I show the particles for this object and we can see what's actually going on in terms of the particles and the connection of this object. Obviously, I can make the particle smaller and I can generate more particles for it. For example, if I go back into my global flex settings and decrease the particle radius to a value of something like two, or even if I make it automatic by decreasing it to zero, all of a sudden the object will consist of a lot more particles and we'll get an even better, softer result. And then it's up to us to go and play with the parameter so we can change the cluster stiffness to even a lower value and we can continue playing and seeing what kind of effect this has on our final mesh. But at least now it behaves as a soft object and not a rigid body object. So I hope this gives you a little bit more information about setting up your Lucid scenes and that you will find the new preserve initial state feature useful for your simulations. Thank you very much for watching.